So for this afternoon, we are going to talk about risk management. For this class, I will begin risk management before proceeding to international finance. Okay. When it comes to the management of risk, okay, risk is a deviation from expectation, by the way. We have derivatives in order to aid us in doing those uh, in doing those um, mitigation. Okay. So in risk management, we may use derivatives such as forwards and futures contracts. A forward contract is a customized contract between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a specified price on a specified future date. Futures are similar to forwards except that they are standardized and they can be traded at exchanges. Okay? So it is in my belief that this is not your first encounter with the deri with derivatives. Okay? So number one, we may use derivatives like forwards and futures. Quick review. What are derivatives, by the way? Derivatives are securities whose prices are dependent on an underlying asset. That's why they are called derivatives. Their value derives from another asset, which we call the underlying. So I'm going to start with something simple involving forwards and futures. How do they work, by the way? Well, basically, there is one party who would like to sell an asset, another party who would like to buy the asset. The problem is the asset is not yet available now. Delivery is not intended today. It will be in some future date. Both parties are afraid that the prices may fluctuate. The seller is afraid that it might go down. The buyers are concerned that it might go up. So the tendency is that um, the tendency is that they would rather no? they would rather have them fixed now in order to manage the risk position. Okay, so a forward is a contract between two parties, one buyer and one seller, to sell an underlying asset, buy or sell an underlying asset at a specified price on a specified future date. Forwards are basically customized. While futures, their standardized version, are standardized. No? <laughs> While futures, on the other hand, are standardized. Excuse me. Huh? So you might be asking, are they just the same? Well, the specifics are different. They vary with the details, the technicalities, but the intention is the same. They would like to agree the price now so that by the time that delivery will happen, nobody is shocked that the price is too high or too low. Allow me to name the two parties in a futures and a forwards contract. The long party is the one who would like to buy a certain asset, which we call the underlying asset, while the short par party is its seller. Okay? Long party buyer, short party seller. SS, short seller. Okay? Now, let me give a brief background on how forwards and futures came to be. There was a time when Farmers and millers uh, would have to endure the seasonality as well as the price fluctuations of the local produce. Okay, let's say that they we're talking about wheat, no? Trigo, no? wheat, in order to make bread. The farmer at harvest will be selling wheat to the miller, while the miller is going to buy it from the farmer. The problem is. The farmer does not control the time of harvesting. 
Uh, it may take a month, three months, or five months from now, depending on the season. Okay? So it will happen in a future date. However, they are now both worried because, of course, their livelihoods are at stake. If during the time of harvest prices go up, the miller will be at a disadvantage, right? Kawawa naman si miller. When at the future date, the harvest date, the prices go down, kawawa naman yung farmer, no? The farmer will be at a disadvantage. So the problem is, if this will take three months, five months, both of them cannot sleep at night, right? Hindi sila makakatulog. Hala, baka mamaya malulugi ako ng sobra. Ba? So para wala ng problema, buti pa, mag-agree na lang sila ng price ngayon mismo. Okay? They agree the price in advance. And that is how four words were created. Okay? So that they can both sleep at night. Okay, they can be happy. All right? So it's possible that the farmer would have been better off, no? Pagdating sa future date, tumaas yung presyo. Masaya sana siya lalo. But again, it's not about gaining more, but it's about being able to sleep at night. Okay? Hindi ka na worried na bababa yung presyo, tataas yung presyo. Okay? Kon, uh, meron ka ng confidence na kahit papano, meron ka matatanggap na reasonable amount. So the miller can be at an advantage kapag walang forwards. Paano kung biglang bagsak yung presyo? Mas masaya sana si miller. But then again, it's not about earning X gains. This is about managing your risk position. Yung bang hindi ka malulugi ng sobra. We call these positions natural hedges because both of them can reduce their overall risk. No? The overall risk of the farmer and the miller are reduced no? when they agree the price in advance. Time passed by that exchanges uh, are there to facilitate these kinds of contracts. The exchanges can guarantee the terms of the contract will be enforced. And at the same time, they were, they were able to standardize it. Jan uh, nagumpisa yung futures. That is when futures were created. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed our short storytelling. So basically, that is how forwards and futures would work. Okay, tayo? Ah, sige. An American importer of English clothing has contracted to pay an amount fixed in British pounds three months from now. If the importer worries that the US dollar may depreciate sharply against the British pound in the interim, it would be well advised to blank. I will give you one minute. Everyone, please enter your answers. So you have here an American importer of English clothing. So this American is an importer, meaning to say buyer. Siya. He has a uh, payable, no? contracted to pay an amount fixed in British pounds three months from now. Okay, ba? okay that's clear. Now, the importer worries that the U.S. dollar may depreciate sharply against the British pound in the interim. It would be well advised to blank. Actually, there are two possible answers here. The answers are A and B. Okay? This American importer can be a buyer of the pound 
bibili siya ng pound at magbebenta siya kapalit dollars. Tama ba? Okay. So A and B will take place. But because we have to choose only one answer, the correct answer is letter A. Malinaw kasi na yung pampalit niya sa dollar ay pound. Hindi niya binenta yung dollar para sa yen o sa euro. Binenta niya yung dollar para sa pound. Don't get me wrong. Tama yung mga sagot niyo, no? Most of you answered boy. It's just that, hindi malinaw kung ang pinagpalit ba niya ay euro, yen, o tama, pound. Okay? Hindi malinaw kung anong pampalit sa dollar. But letter A is clear. No? Kung ano man yung hawak niyang currency, malamang US dollar yon. Ginamit niya pambili ng pound. No? You exchange your dollars with pounds. Because the American here is a buyer, meron siyang payable. Dahil meron siyang payable, which is fixed in British pounds, kailangan niya bumili ng pound. So dapat, pumasok siya sa isang forward contract para bumili ng pound. Okay? Your answers are correct. Very good. The answer is boy or A. But then again, the best answer is A. I hope malinaw yung explanation ko. Kung hindi man, uh, please seek for clarification. Interrupt me anytime. Next, a U.S. company has an account receivable from a Swiss company for 100,000 Swiss francs due in three months. At the time of the contract, the exchange rate was 1 Swiss franc is to 1 US dollar. The US company wishes to manage its foreign exchange exposure and therefore blank. One minute. Okay, enter your answers, please. Enter your answers, please. Okay. So, again, we are a U.S. company here. A while ago, there's a U.S. company who is going to pay in British pounds. So, kailangan niyang bumili ng pounds. Tama? Uh, where are your answers? Where are your answers, everyone? Please enter your answers. Please enter your answers, everyone. Okay. This time, the U.S. company has an account receivable in Swiss franc. So, a month from now, no, three months from now, three months from now, this U.S. company is going to receive Swiss francs. Anong gagawin niya sa Swiss franc? Siyempre, hindi niya kailangan yun. No? Gagawin niyang dollar. So, the only possible answer here is to sell the Swiss franc future. Okay? We'll talk about swaps and other kinds of derivatives next time. But between selling and buying the Swiss franc, naturally, we are going to sell. May receivable tayo na Swiss franc three months from now. Eh, US company tayo. Hindi siyempre, ibenta natin yon by the time we will receive it. Ngayon pa lang, para hindi tayo mabigla sa exchange rate, mabuti pa kaya ay mag-agree na tayo kung ano yung exchange rate. That's why we will have them in futures contract. Sells the Swiss franc in futures. Pag sinabing futures, delivery to happen three months from now, the future. However, we agree at the exchange rate now. Letter boy. Okay? Sige. Malinaw na ha? If you have a payable in another currency, you have to buy the currency so that you can settle your payable. If you have a receivable in another currency, 
of course, you will have to sell the foreign currency by the time you will receive it. Clear? Ah, sige. What about this one? I'll give another one minute. Again, enter your answers, please. Enter your answers, please. Everyone, wag kayo madaya. Please enter your answers, please. A company has a foreign currency denominated trade due in 60 days. So 60 days from now, kailangan niya ng foreign currency. So in order to eliminate the foreign currency exchange rate risk associated with the payable, Naturally, the company would just have to buy the foreign currency forward today. No? Kung bibili siya ng foreign currency forward ngayon, naka-fix na yung exchange rate. Although yung exchange mangyayari 60 days from now, bibili siya ng foreign currency. Bakit siya bibili? Gagamitin niya pambayad. Kung may babayarin kang sa future in foreign currency, you have to buy foreign currency. Kung may matatanggap ka na foreign currency, natural ibabenta ngayon. Okay? Very good, everyone. The answer is simply C. Kung gagawin mo ang A, parang wala kang ginawa. No? Nahintayin natin kung ano yung spot rate, no? yung magiging uh, rate sa future. Kung ano man yun, yun na yun. E paano kung biglang, uh, paano kung biglang tumaas? edi mapapamahal sa local currency yung babayarin mo. No? Kung, kung aaralin nyo si letter boy, dumodoble yung problema nyo. No? Kinonvert nyo sa currency ngayon, tapos ibalik nyo sa future. Ibalik nyo sa future sa foreign currency. Letter boy will double your problem. So very good for not overthinking. The answer is C. As simple as that. Okay? So now let us have some calculations. By the way, linawin ko lang ha. In this problem, pag sinabing to purchase yung company yung bibili ng euro, to sell euros, the company is the one who's going to sell the euros. Just to be clear, ha? Just to be clear, yun yung intention dito sa problem. Okay, I'll give you two minutes. Go.
Okay, tuloy nyo lang ang pagsagot. I just, I'm just going to read it to you first. Palermo Corp sold equipment to a French firm. Palermo will be paid 4275 uh 4,275k euros in 90 days. The bank has given the firm a 90-day forward quote of 1.5487 dollars per euro to purchase the euros forward. 1.9 dollars per euro to sell the euros forward. Palermo decided to wait 90 days to sell the euros when the spot rate was $1.5645 per euro. How much additional dollar revenue did Palermo gain or lose by waiting to sell the euros on the spot market instead of selling forward the euros? May I know what your answers are? May I know your answers? Enter now. Okay, try natin, ha? So, ang ginawa niya, Palermo sold on the spot market Kung ano naging rate, yun na yun. $1.5645 per euro. So, ito yung natanggap niya. Kung sana ginamit niya daw yung forward euros. No? Euros. Binenta niya sa forward market. It could have been $1.5922 per euro. So, yung dapat sana matanggap niya, $6,806,655 instead of $6,688. Two, three, eight. So if only, no? if only ginamit niya yung forward, kikita sana siya ng additional. Kaso hindi. Ginawa niya, sa spot market niya binenta, lugi siya ng 118417. Very good, no? The answer is boy. Okay? Very good. The answer is letter boy. Okay, mukhang naka-absorb niya naman, no? 118417 dollars loss. Okay? Ah, sige. Here's a similar problem. I'll give you another two minutes. Go. Okay, everyone, please answer. Carrington Industries sold equipment to a Mexican firm. Carrington will be paid 41,275,000 pesos in 30 days. The bank has given the firm a 30-day forward quote of $0.0979 per peso to purchase the Mexican pesos forward. 0 0.09322 dollars per peso to sell the Mexican pesos forward. Carrington decided to wait 30 days to sell the pesos when the spot rate was 0 
dollars per peso. How much additional dollar revenue did Carrington gain or lose by waiting to sell the pesos on the spot instead of selling forward the pesos? Answer, everyone, please enter your answers, everyone. Everyone, please enter your answers. Lahat na? Okay. By selling on the spot, ito yung nakuha ni Carrington Industries. If only binenta niya sa forward market, it would have been $0.09322 per peso. Okay? Dollars per Mexican peso. Actually, nakabuti pa ba sa kanya na binenta niya sa spot? Tama? So, minsan nga nagigain ka, no? Kumikita ka dahil hindi ka nag-manage ng risk. But then again, this is not about gaining more. This is about um, minimizing your loss, no? ensuring that you will not lose too much. Because of what he did, kumita pa siya ng 113093 gain. The correct answer is letter A. Okay? The correct answer is letter A. Very good, everyone. Mukhang lahat naman ay nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Letter A. Okay? Ah, sige. How about this one? One last question. How about this one? Okay, given a spot rate of $1.8655, 90-day forward rate of $1.8723, the pound sterling in the forward market is blank. Everyone, please enter your answers. Everyone, please enter your answers. So kung ito lang yung given, Hindi natin masasabi kung overvalued or undervalued yung ating uh, forward rate. It takes a complex calculation to determine whether it is overvalued or undervalued. We can speak about, uh, we need to know the concept of interest rate parity in the future before we proceed to including the overvalued or undervalued. So, we're talking about the pound sterling. Yung pound sterling, saan siya mas mahal? Mas mahal ba siya sa spot o sa forward market? Anyone? Yung bida ng tanong na to ay si pound sterling. Mas mahal ba siya sa spot o sa forward market? Anyone? Is the value of the pound higher in the spot rate or the forward rate? The forward rate. If the forward rate is higher than the spot rate, we consider this a premium. Okay, the inverse, if the forward rate is lower than the spot rate, that's called a discount. So the answer here is simply letter C. Okay, so I'm going to conclude our discussion here. Okay, the next questions, I'm going to record it in another class. Sige. Okay. So, before I'm going to end the recording, merong nagtatanong dito. Uh, Bomir. Sir, ano po yung difference sa discussion ng derivatives or hedging in mass with that in afar? Well, walang difference yung ginagawa natin except the convention. Ano na the convention? Um, ano ba to? Dito kasi dapat binabanggit naman talaga sa point of view ng bank. Pero dito sa mga problems na binigay ko, sa point of view ng company na nag -e hedge Tama? The focus of advanced accounting is accounting. The focus of uh, finance is decision making. No? Determining the gain or loss. So yung focus natin dito sa financial markets, more of um, kikita ba tayo dito o hindi? It will be tied up to whether one will be able to 
reach its, his or her goals no? to manage the risk exposure. While in advanced accounting, the concentration is on how to record the transaction. Ilalagay ko ba to sa PNL o ilalagay ko sa OCI? Ayun, problema yun na advanced accounting. Malinaw ba? Uh, okay, so it's more about the point of view. No? Dito yung problema natin, no? saan tayo mas kikita? Kung hindi man saan tayo mas kikita, saan tayo mas safe? Sa accounting, edi accounting. <laughs> Paano natin i-record yung transaction? Okay, so I'm going to stop recording now. Uh -huh.